All right, welcome everybody. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We are so um, excited to be with you here today. We are coming to you live from Lawrence, Kansas in the Crew Network headquarters. And my name is Laura Lewis, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer. And Jenny and Megan are here with us and they're gonna um, continue on in our presentation. But a few housekeeping items that we wanna chat about once we get started here. Oh, well, let me advance the slide, okay. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna do a Q&A at the end. So save all your questions uh, to enter into that chat feature. And to get to that chat feature, just hover your, um, your mouse on the bottom of the screen and you'll see a couple of things, um, participants, share, chat. Just hit that chat button and a screen will pop up so you can um, enter questions as you see fit. You'll see a lot of people have already uh, done a roll call and said who they are and what chapter they're from, which is wonderful. We'll also do um, have an opportunity for demonstration. So if there's something specifically uh, you want to know how to do in chapter management or somewhere else, we'll have that opportunity as well. If um, any of the boxes are in your way, just like hover your mouse over and drag them out of the way um, if you can't see the slides. Sometimes that could be an issue. And then finally, we will be um, sending out a recording of this webinar. Um, as, well, as well as the slides so that you can share them with your chapter, your fellow chapter leaders or other members um, along the way. But those will probably be ready by Friday or next week. I will also note, as you saw, we're doing a new member webinar tomorrow. This is something brand new that we're doing for um, members who have joined between November and um, pretty much last week. So brand new members, first time members. And we will have that recording um, and slides available to you as well so you can um, see and hear what they um, what we discuss with them uh, tomorrow. So we're going to jump right in and uh, let you know what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about the Crew Network website, your chapter integrated sites, as well as Crew Biz and chapter management. So here we go. First of all, we receive feedback all the time about you know, hey, what's the difference between Crew Network website, chapter websites, and Crew Biz? And so we wanna start just by reminding you all about the differences and what you can find where. So the Crew Network and the 45 integrated chapter websites that many of our chapters have are meant to serve as our public front door. You know, nowadays when someone wants to know about Crew, they do a Google search. And so we want the first thing that comes up to be Crew Network, or if they're in Chicago, Crew Chicago, or if they're in, they're in Austin, Crew Austin, and so on. And we want this to be the first place that they go to learn about our organization. So this is our public front door. We want to recruit new members and sponsors here. And we want to tell potential members, sponsors, and the media who we are. You know, we frequently have reporters reach out to Crew Network um, for our research and different things. And they find it through the website. They find it by doing a, a Google search. And so we want to make sure that our website is a good representation of our organization. A reminder also that Crew Network website and the um, chapter integrated websites host user accounts for both members and non-members. So when a non-member registers for an event through one of our websites, uh, they have to create an account. And so we have their basic information, their email, um, you know, potentially their address, um, all their transactions if they attend your luncheon or, um, you know, something like that. So just a reminder, Crew Network is our public site and it is for um, members and non-members. So one of the important things for you to remember um, about those members and non-members using our site is where they can access their information, their account. And so this is a visual of um, accessing my account through the Crew Network website and what it looks like when you click to open. This may be very familiar to you, but we want to also make sure it's familiar um, for your event registrants, for your members to know where their information is. So what's here, uh, this is basic information and demographics. And these are some of the things we wanna make sure we have. And I'm gonna go to the next slide to show you. Um, one of the most important areas that we want to have your members record their information and non-members is their areas of specialty. And why this is important is because this is the information um, that is searchable in Cruvis. And we wanna make sure that your members, our members, everyone can be found when looking for that expertise. So this is really um, something we wanted to call out. There are many specialties. I wanna say 
70, 70 or so. <laughs> um, this isn't qualified fields. This is, these are specialties. We want to make sure that these are filled out extensively um, so that our search functionality in crib is, is really up to par and that we are um, making sure our expertise is, is denoted for the membership. So what is supposed to be, what is on the Crew Network website and what do we recommend is on your website? Well, again, anything we want to be made available to the public. So obviously our events and our programs, our leadership programs, how to find and join. That's really important and that is why we, in developing the new website, put that join or find crew option front and, you know, right to the um, right of the website homepage. Our industry research, our benchmark studies, our white papers, that's public information. We want it to be cited publicly. Our blog, Wendy's blog is there. Any of our news content, our news releases, our articles, news you can use, member to member, anything you want put, put out there to the industry to see your members achieving wonderful things or getting promoted or um, you know, anything, anything showcasing their expertise and leadership. Our sponsors, our board and our committees, those are important because you know, potential sponsors want to reach out. Who do I get in touch with? We want to list our sponsors, give them that visibility, as well as our committees. This is a way to recognize them for their leadership roles and to know, um, you know, if a media contact wants to reach out for something that your communications committee chair may be the best person to reach. So having that information on your site is important. And then finally, our foundation and philanthropies. Um, you know, we, we thought that this was important to, to make its own page dedicated on the chapter site. And we have a whole section dedicated to this on the Crew Network site to make sure the public knows um, what we support both in the Crew Network Foundation and our own philanthropies. So this is a visual representation. Um, just, we, we wanna make sure that your members know that there are two different distinct sites. There's the crew network and your chapter site, which you see here on the left, which is public, which is available to everybody, members and non-members. And then on the right, we have CrewBiz. And CrewBiz is our members only platform. And it is, there is a login. You have to um, log in to get there. Now a non-member can see selected content if they go there. But we wanna make sure that your members understand, especially our new members. We'll be talking about this extensively tomorrow on the new member webinar that the public sites are public and the CrewBiz is members only. I'll say one note about CrewBiz. Megan's gonna do an extensive um, deep dive, but one thing that we wanted to make sure you remembered as chapter leaders is to utilize CrewBiz for your own business. We know that a lot of our chapter leaders are searching for chapter stuff here because Megan knows what you're searching for. She has those analytics. <laughs> But we want to remind you to use CrewBiz to do business. And we know sometimes it's hard when you're you know, leading your chapter and you're so focused on um, the chapter success that sometimes you overlook this as a business tool. And we made this investment to um, as a significant member benefit. So please make sure that you're remembering to find those deals and post in the discussion in the open forum um, and finding those members that can help you uh, advance your business. So just a note there. Back to the public site. The search bar works, it works great, but we wanna make sure um, that you're remembering on your chapter sites and the crew network site that this is a search for that public information. Again, the white papers, the benchmark study, the news items, the award winners, the distinguished leaders, um, the convention session, things like that. So make sure that you're putting public, public search info into the crew network site and your chapter sites, not chapter leader stuff like resources. Those are gonna be found in CrewBiz. And just a quick note about our integrated chapter sites. As I said, we now have 45 chapters who are utilizing um, the integrated sites. And we designed these specifically for a few reasons. Number one, to identify more of our chapters with the one global crew identity. We are all crew and we wanted to align strategically to have our sites look really similar and to share resources. So why are all the links on, you know, chapter homepages back to Crew Network? That's because we want to share the important information that we put out that we want your chapter to leverage. So for example, our industry research, um, our awards programs, our scholarships, our foundation scholarships. You'll see some of those things linked back to Crew Network because we, want, we don't want you to have to recreate the wheel. We want to make sure that you're utilizing this on a global scale 
and uh, to your advantage, to your chapter's advantage. Also from an efficiency standpoint, we developed this brain model to make sure that when we made one little update to a section on the homepage, like when our membership goes from 11,000 to 12,000 globally, that we could make that change once and it would reflect on all 45 sites. So it was also something we had in mind. We also shared our photography, our stock photography and the photography that we use um, at our events and sponsor logos and things like that. There's a global media library or there are libraries, images that you can share across websites for consistency. So again, you don't have to go out and purchase images. We have them um, available for your use on your site. So I know um, if there's any questions about integrated chapter sites, please let us know. Um, we have several more sites in the works. And since these sites have been now live for a year, we're, we're learning quite, about, quite a bit about how they're used and you know, even some pain points and some improvements we could make. And we're absolutely open to some of that. So talk to your chapter admin and funnel up those questions through us. And we're happy to um, look at making improvements or changes as well. And one thing that has been on the horizon that we've touched on um, with leaders at summits and even convention and things is that Crew Network will be undergoing a rebrand this year and a branded image campaign. And we're super excited about it. And this is, um, this is very intentionally happening with our 30th anniversary this year. And we thought this was a great opportunity to look at the last 30 years, honor our past, but really to consider and plan for what's ahead in the next 30 years. And we knew it was time to move forward and rebrand our organization to elevate it. And one of the things I wanted to call out here is that what we have planned is a rebrand toolkit for chapters. So when Crew Network launches its new brand in September at the convention, we will have a um, comprehensive toolkit and assistance in uh, rebranding our chapters um, logo and messaging and things like that um, should you choose to align with our new brand. So I know that there's been some chat about, chatter about it. We've addressed it at some of the events, but I want to assure you that Crew Network will have the resources and the tools available for your chapter to update its look um, come September. So if there's any questions about that, I know several chapters have reached out because they're interested in rebranding and we've sort of said, well, hold off. September is going to be a big month and uh, you might like what we have to offer. So I wanted to put that out there. And um, again, I'm Laura Lewis, Chief Marketing Officer. And if there are any questions about that, please let me know. But with that, I will pass it along to um, Jenny to move forward with chapter management. Hello, everyone. Um, Laura just mentioned that um, the Crew Network and the chapter websites are public websites and Crewbiz is members only. That has given us some questions um, or has resulted in some questions from some of you as to why chapter management lives on the public site. And this goes back to what Laura was saying earlier about the transactions. Non-members have um, transactions that are tracked on the public website. There are non-member event registrations. There are non-members in your uh, membership historical data. So there are past members who are no longer members. So those, since it is, showing transactional data, it has to be accessible from my account versus from Krubis. So I just I wanted to throw that out there since I know that was a question that we talked about um, in New Orleans last month. So um, let's get started talking about um, the specifics of chapter management. Um, chapter management is a section of Crew Network's website that was created specifically for leaders to allow quick and easy access to comprehensive rosters of your members or segmented lists of your members so you can perform all the logistical tasks and quickly see an overview of your chapter statistics. Um, the data is presented to encourage strategic planning in your membership recruitment and retention, programming ideas, and participation, just to name a few. There's lots of ways that chapter leaders are using the data out of chapter management. So chapter management is accessible by default to everyone on your chapter's board of directors. Your chapter president can authorize additional permissions through our office for their presidential term. And also remember this tool can only display the data if it is populated into the database. So encourage your leaders, your chapter members, your new members, everyone to go ahead and log into my account and fill in their data. 
So let's get started. To access chapter management, oh, I was a slide behind, I'm sorry. To access chapter <laughs> management, um, you can either log in from the Crew Network website or you can bookmark this link here at the bottom, crewnetwork.org slash chapter management. Or you can access it from the login on the Crew Network website. And then after you log in, you're going to go to my account. This is the same place Laura showed you earlier where you um, want to enter your specialty information. Um, and this slide here shows you the About Me tab opens automatically. And again, you'll see the areas of specialty um, on the screen. You'll also see that I've highlighted date joined the CRE industry. Um, and then the demographics, the gender, ethnicity, date of birth, and salary range demographics. Those are all important data points that we want to collect. It's not something that is required um, for them to fill in. The date joined the CRE industry is technically required, but we don't require any of the diversity demographics. And we want to have that information because better data allows us to perform better. Um, to serve you better. So um, encourage your members to go in and fill this out. Um, okay, so the About Me tab opens automatically. If you go clear to the right, you will see chapter management. So for the purpose of this demo, we're gonna just click the chapter management button and then you will see this page. And in addition to seeing all of your chapters data, we have created a way for you to see top level uh, crew network information. Um, using the selector here, leaders will be able to see either your own chapter's data or crew network's membership statistics and leadership data simply by changing this drop down. Obviously, you're not going to see all the chapters like my example here does, um, but I just wanted to show you that's where you can change um, what chapter or what organization you are seeing data for. Okay, here is my last overview note before we look at the actual web pages. Um, all these data points that you see, uh, you see the arrow and it has um, highlighted information or the um, um, different colored, um, there it says 2018 Crew Network Convention and Marketplace. All of those data points, you can click on them and they are representative of a specific section of your chapter's membership. So when you click on them, you will see a um, pop out list of some sort, which can be exported into Excel with complete contact information. So this functionality is similar across all sections of chapter management. On the membership tab specifically, all of the rosters on the membership tab contain contact information and the membership status fields. So if more information is needed beyond the statistics and charts that we're going to look at in a minute on the membership tab, see if you can use the roster. It's set up to export to Excel so you can easily download and sort or filter the data to obtain the specific subsets of your chapter's membership that you need to see. Okay, so first thing on the chapter management or on the membership tab is the um, current term members. So that shows you um, the total number of paid members for the current term. And clicking on the number provides access to an exportable roster for your chapter. And then just below the current term members, you see new members and rejoining members. Those are included in the total membership number, but it's just a subset to show you how many new members have joined for the current term and how many members from previous years have rejoined during the current term. And please note that the next section, the section that's under current membership composition, is currently being updated um, based on the changes that we discussed um, to the membership composition requirements at the Winter Leadership Summit in New Orleans last month. So now I'm gonna to switch to talking about that really quick. Um, if, if you aren't familiar with the membership composition changes that we discussed, um, there is an FAQ resource on, um, available in Crubiz and the resources. But in a nutshell, the composition requirements now state that a majority 
of the members of any chapter must have five or more years of experience in a qualified field of commercial real estate. That statistic was previously 75%. So it's actually less restrictive. And then the industry requirement has remained the same. So 75% of all members of a chapter must be employed in a qualified field of commercial real estate. This change was, okay. This change was made to bring the policies and procedures in alignment with crew networks bylaws. Um, it enables chapters more autonomy to recruit and admit more professionals who have less experience in the industry to kind of strengthen the pipeline of uh, professionals coming into the commercial real estate industry. As for the data itself on chapter management, remind members to verify their years of experience from my account, it's calculated using the year they began working in the commercial real estate industry, which we saw in a previous slide, but members cannot update the qualified fields of commercial real estate by themselves. This field is only editable by crew network staff based on direction from a chapter leader. So as chapter leaders, it's imperative that you are deliberate in the review process and ask questions of the applicants to enable you to identify the specific field in which they are qualified for membership and then make sure you communicate that information to us so we can record it. And, oh, sorry, I forgot the last point here. <laughs> if you do want to make changes to your bylaws um, regarding this composition change, um, feel free to reach out to me because I do have some standard verbiage. Now back to the qualified fields. <laughs> um, the, this is where you see that data and this is why it's so important that you very thoroughly vet members and identify these fields for us so that you can see this data depicted accurately. Um, this graph should be used alongside the full list of qualified fields of commercial real estate, which is linked from several other places on this page. And use it as an indicator of which industry fields are best re represented in your chapter, as well as which sectors are underrepresented in your chapter. And um, there are a couple of examples about how um, the data, this data from here can be used by different committees. Uh, the membership committee could use the data to identify underrepresented sectors and target recruitment efforts to improve the chapter uh, industry diversity. Your programs committee could use this data to identify program ideas that um, would be relevant to the larger population or they can click on the list of members that are in that industry to get the names of potential mentors or speakers. Um, the sponsorship committee could use this information um, during the ask. Um, my favorite example is if there's a large number of lawyers in your organization, remind a potential law firm sponsor that there are a lot of lawyers in the group and sponsoring would be a great way to further elevate their firm's visibility to the membership of your chapter. So in this slide, you will notice the second most populated block is not indicated. Um, click that block to export a list of the members who do not have this value designated. And then ask your membership committee to meet with those members and identify in which field they are qualified for membership and crew. And then tell Crew Network staff and we will record them and this um, chart will show way less more not indicated <laughs> people. <laughs> Okay, next you'll see um, three different pie charts that show the different subsets of data. Um, again, slices from each of these pie charts are clickable and they provide an exportable list of these members. Um, the first one, member types, just shows the members in each of your chapter's categories. Uh, years of crew membership. This is a visual of how long members have been part of crew. Having access to this data is great if you want to survey a subset of your data to find out maybe the members who have been members for a long time. Why, what's the value they are getting? Um, interview them, get, um, get some snippets to use in uh, membership promotions. Um, or you could go the other direction and ask the people who have just joined what would add more value um, to their membership or maybe encourage them to um, join committees or um, something like that. Um, or again, that's a great place to look for mentors as with the, the people who have been in crew a long time. 
Um, I'm sorry, that was for years of experience would be a great place to look for mentors. Um, so um, it's also the years of experience is also great for marketing data. Um, when you're recruiting members, you could say that over half of your members have more than 10 years of experience or, um, you know, something like that. So it's, it's great for marketing. Okay. This slide is labeled history because this is the one um, section uh, of, the, of the membership tab that is talking about past or future members. They are not current members. First, you'll see you're provided with a number of open invoices. They're right under the pending previous members header. Um, check this list to identify and follow up with the individuals who were approved and sent their initial invoice but have not yet paid. Encourage them to pay their dues so their membership is activated and they can start utilizing the benefits. Um, second is a number for removed invoices. These individuals were approved and invoiced for membership, um, but they never paid their dues. So after three months, um, we typically reach out to the chapter and say, we're going to remove this invoice unless you tell us not to. Um, so that's the list of those people who have um, been approved but never actually paid. So you might reach out to those people in case you want to ask why they, maybe it just got overlooked or um, a life event happened. Um, you might be able to um, turn some of those previously interested members into members. Um, the final number there is for individuals who were members the prior term but who have not yet renewed for the current term. So this is very timely right now at the beginning of March. Um, right now, this data will show the individuals who were members in 2018, but have not renewed for 2019. Um, and some of those individuals may still not even realize they haven't renewed. So you might have your membership um, people use that list and follow up with, with those individuals. In the next section, historical end of year data and trends, you'll see two line graphs. Um, which show year-end data. Um, you'll need to look um, at the, the first chart specifically, you'll need to look at it from the perspective of a snapshot of that entire year's data. So I've got 2017 marked on this slide as an example. And you'll see the total line shows you that there were 216 members in 2017. So you would click on that to export a list of those members. The non-renewing line shows us, and that's the orange line, it tells us that there were 62 members in 2017 who did not renew their membership for the 2018 term. And then the very bottom line, the new member line, shows us that there were 52 members who joined for the 2017 term. And some of those possibly joined in November or December of 2016, because that's part of the 2017 term, um, as part of that 14 month for 12 month membership drive, okay? Um, the chart at the right is pretty self-explanatory. It shows retention and growth percentages for each year. Um, the data points obviously are not exportable um, since they show trends versus an actual set of data and list of members. Um, now to go back to the first chart, you may no have noticed that the number of individuals who did not renew for the current year um, is noted as 62 in the orange. If you look above, under the pending previous members, it says have not renewed for this term. It says 61. Those two numbers are typically exactly the same. I wanted, I specifically used this example because I wanted to point out that um, one of the people that is included in the data point in the 62 number um, has passed away. So we needed to record that that person was a member and within the numbers and the trends, um, but we did not want to list that person um, on the more likely exportable list, which is the top one, um, because we didn't want people to be reaching out um, to that person um, for any reason. <laughs> so um, this is just one of the safeguards that Crew Network has put in place to try to help you and um, prevent some of those you know, uncomfortable situations. Um, but I just wanted to point out to you that um, if you ever do see a, a discrepancy, um, it might be something like that. Um, feel free to reach out to us and ask. 
Um, but I would, um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Okay. And then this is the last slide about membership. Um, this is about the diversity dem demographics. So you'll see gender, ethnicity, and annual salary. Um, this is the only exception to the export rule. The data which members have provided here is for statistical use only. So none of these charts are exportable. Um, this information can all be entered by the members from the My Account section on crewnetwork.org. Um, so that's all on the membership tab. Let's go to participation. There are two parts to this tab. Um, the top section shows chapter event registration. The lower section shows crew network event registration um, for members from your chapter. The top section is populated if your chapter is one of the more than 40 chapters who contract with crew networks chapter services team to assist with event management. At the top level view, you can see a list of your chapter's events and a quick glance as to how many are registered. This can help identify if another promotional email is needed or social media push, um, or if you need to increase counts with the venue. Um, click on the event name and that provides you with the roster of attendees. This doesn't include all membership data, it includes um, event registrant data. Uh, the <clears throat> Excuse me, the crew network event registration portion at the bottom allows you to see who from your chapter is registered for the selected crew network event. Since delegate registration is required for the council meeting at crew network leadership summits, there is also an indication of who is registered as a delegate. This export is helpful when coordinating travel plans and on site activities, carpooling to and from the airport, sharing hotel rooms, or arranging on site photos. The export includes contact information so you can easily reach out to the other registrants from your chapter. Next is the sponsorship tab. So again, as part of the contracted services that Crew Network staff provides to many chapters, this tab provides a chart which shows a quick overview of the sponsorship activity for the past few years, along with an exportable list of sponsors, key contacts, and payments made or balances due. This was new as of last year, um, and chapters who use this absolutely love this feature, so we are very happy to have this. Next is the leadership tab. This page was created so you would have an easy way to pull a list of your fellow chapter leaders and their full contact information for an email or a quick reference at any time, anywhere. Um, at the top, it lists your chapter's board of directors, again, with the option to export the full list um, for an email or quick reference. Um, crew network staff will enter the board information into our database so we can ensure the data integrity for the current board for every chapter. But we have created underneath the board um, a section for current uh, committee rosters. Um, your chapter leaders can easily add your chapter's committee rosters into our database. And that actually is live. It populates that information directly onto their CRUBIS profile. Um, one of our shared goals at CRU is to provide leadership roles and opportunities for our members. So this is a great way to acknowledge the service of your committee members and to record it in the database so that their service can be considered when evaluating them for future leadership roles. Um, and you can see from this uh, slide, it's very easy. You select edit members and then add committee members. Um, you are able to search from all of the members of your chapter um, and then you add in the position on the committee and their term. And the last tab on chapter management is the foundation tab. Um, two quick notes about this tab. First, it's all live data and replaces the donor report spreadsheet that used to be a manual upload. Um, second, the amount of the donation is never displayed. Foundation donations in any denomination are appreciated and recognized. This tab actually shows the exact pro progress of your chapter towards meeting the three specific chapter challenges. So you'll see the first one is 100% board donations. This will show which board members have donated and which board members have not donated. Um, so that you can reach out and follow up. 
Um, the second challenge is 50% of members making a donation. You see a progress bar here and exportable lists of members who have and have not made donations during the year. Your champions can use this list to send thank you messages or general encouragement to those who haven't donated, or they could cross reference it with a list of people who are attending an event, for example. Um, and the third challenge is the $1,000 minimum chapter donation. Um, there's an indicator that shows whether or not your chapter has met that requirement. Um, over the years, we have developed chapter management as a tool to provide you, the chapter leaders, access to the data in a way that is easy to use and understand. There are many additional items on our wish list for data that we would like to provide to you. Um, however, developing data sets for you to have direct access into for display in a fashion that is user friendly and takes into consideration the myriad of different ways chapter leaders um, might expect to view the data is a difficult task. That being said, if there is something specific that your chapter would like to see and you think other chapters would benefit from it as well, please don't hesitate to make a suggestion. Um, we tend to look for the commonly requested tasks and then once identified, we dig through the discovery and details um, to determine the best delivery. So, you know, developing and implementing these changes can be a time consuming process. Please have patience, but we definitely do want to hear from you. And my last slide here, I'm going to talk a little bit about Microsoft 365 business accounts. Um, many chapters have inquired about cloud storage and access to email accounts or other programs. Um, we did a bunch of research and we discovered they're all available through Microsoft 365 business accounts. So starting in 2019, Crew Network is paying for one Microsoft 365 business account per chapter upon request and we are handing you the keys. So each of these accounts includes one terabyte of online storage through OneDrive, um, as well as access to a variety of different Microsoft apps. You can see a few of them on the slide here. Um, your chapter board should meet and discuss how this account will be used and who should have permissions. Will you wanna share certain folders or will login credentials to the actual account be shared? Um, have that discussion as a group. Um, then your chapter president will be asked to sign an a, um, agreement, a user agreement, and they will be given the login credentials to disperse however your chapter has decided to do it. Um, beyond that, each chapter can use um, the account however you want. Crew Network will just set it up and turn it over to your president. Um, and there are many resources available in the Microsoft Support Center. Um, and we also have created just a really quick getting started video that is in the crew biz um, chapter resources. And now I will let you know I'm available for questions. Uh, feel free to call or email anytime and I will turn it over to Megan. Hello everyone. Uh, this first section that I'm gonna go over, I honestly feel it could be a webinar in and of itself, um, but um, in order to generate prospective members and conversions for your chapter, we've highlighted two of our best practices to help you make the most of your chapter website and email marketing campaigns. So the number one website best practice we feel um, is to limit the use of embedded text in an image. This is honestly a website content best practice. Posting an image of an event flyer is a common faux pas that we see, and there are many um, reasons to stop this. This is really kind of an outdated practice. Uh, number one, the text can't, uh, won't, the text in the image won't scale, so it doesn't get adjusted alongside your responsive website. There's no SEO benefit. Search engines don't read images, so they'll ignore any text in an image screen readers won't read it aloud. So the information on the graphic will only be of use to cited users. In line with that also page translators such as Google Translate don't translate image text. Content won't be recognized in internal searches. So if someone searches um, your website for terms mentioned in the image, they won't get found on the results page. Maintainability is one that people often overlook. If you need to make changes to text, you just make changes to text on your websites. That's pretty simple. What, when it becomes complicated is if the image was created in Photoshop, 
you're going to need the original Photoshop file and you're also going to need the Photoshop application to even change the text. And finally, my huge pet peeve, users cannot copy and paste from an image. I honestly loathe websites that have images or addresses and image files because I am a big copy paster and for Google Maps. So I'm like, how can I find you? <laughs> um, and then with marketing emails, best practice, here's what we know about marketing via email. Email is, the fir is first opened on mobile devices 51% of the time and that number is rising. The most prominent email client is actually Apple um, iPhone at 28%. Mailchimp found that unique clicks amongst mobile users for responsive email campaigns rose from 2.7 to 3.1%, that's nearly a 15% increase. And we know that for every dollar spent, $48 is the average return on email <coughs> marketing investment. So it's likely that your audience is reading your chapter emails on a mobile device. And it's possible by changing the styling and methods of your mobile focused communication that you could reach 15% more potential or current members while multiplying your investment in email by 48 times. So that's huge, just by simply um, how you lay out your email. So that is my number one marketing email best practice. Make sure your emails are designed for phone viewing. Um, you can do that two ways. One is stick to a single column layout or use a responsively designed template. So there'll be less shifting and moving that makes it easier for your audience to read your content. And with responsive design, you can send emails that change depending on what screen they're viewed on. So they're always gonna render correctly. In line with that is to use responsive images. And so make sure to use alt tags in case that email client doesn't load your images. At least there is a text which, which tells the user what's supposed to be there. And that's also a best practice for accessibility for those users um, with site issues. We also encourage you to limit the use invet, invet, excuse me, of embedded text for all of the same reasons you should limit it on your website. And avoid several hyperlinks together. You know, we've all tried to click on a link in an email and accidentally click the other one that's very close to it. So use big tappable call to action buttons. So that's the quick and dirty on the website and email best practices. Now I will move on to our bread and butter, Cruviz, which Laura mentioned is um, a significant member of benefits. So as a chapter leader, it's your job to utilize Cruviz yourself and to ensure that everyone in your chapter also uses it because it really, really is a game changer and a valuable business tool. The Krubis community is accessible from our public website as well as our integrated chapter websites. And today I'm gonna show you five key components of Krubis that every member should know. First and foremost, Krubis gives you access to our entire member directory. And this directory is key, it's a key differentiator when facilitating deals among our multi-discipline global membership. So once you're inside of Krubiz, you should use the directories tab on the navigation bar to get to the member directory. Don't type a member's name in the search box. Um, like Laura said, I can see um, data on the back end of what people are searching for. And I see a lot of names so what that search box actually does is searches content. So what's content? That's discussion threads, blog entries, resource center files. Um, so make sure that we're using that drop down tab. So when searching the directory, you can use basic criteria like name, email, company, and location, or you can scroll down and refine your search based on demographics. Uh, you can search, um, for example, like on current membership affiliations. So members, if they would like to see a list of everyone in their chapter, they can go there and to do that. Um, this is the demographic we recently added. 
um, minority and women-owned business certifications. So we found this um, handy for those that work for like government agencies or other companies that have to give preference or a certain amount of business to these types of certified companies. You can search for crew members who also belong to other commercial real estate trade associations. So Laura and I find this handy when we go to ICSE Recon, we can reach out to them, invite them to receptions. And then as, as Laura and Jenny mentioned, areas of specialty within commercial real estate is also searchable. And I actually have a slide of what did Jenny say? 70? Yeah. And it's growing. So for example, if you're looking for a lawyer, so you would click law that has retail as a specialty, you would click retail. Um, and then you can further amplify that by searching for an area. So that's just a great visual of, of why it's so important to encourage your members to add their areas of specialty on that my account page. And my last encouragement for the directory is to encourage your members to complete their profiles and areas of specialty are not the only important feature um, on Cruvis. The bio has significant importance as well. And as you can see from this post made by Susan and I'm going to butcher her last name. So I'm not, even gonna, okay. <laughs> she's a lawyer out of Chicago and you know, here are a couple highlights. I just had another frustrating experience of wanting to refer work to a crew member in another city, but being unable to easily locate the right person because of missing bios. And she goes on to say, this literally, literally happens every month. That's a lot of missed opportunities. Um, and she was not alone in that opinion. This was our most popular discussion thread in April of last year. So if your encouragement is enough, feel free to use this member's post to get your members to um, add their bios. And here's where I motivate by example. Uh, let's say I have a client and they are looking for an attorney in Canada who has experience in franchising. And you know, I remember meeting this impressive Canadian lawyer from Norton Rose Fulbright at the last Crew Network convention, but for the life of me, I can't remember her name. So I head to the member directory on Crewbiz and do a quick search on company name and country. And I get two results. And because Julie has uploaded a headshot to her Krubiz profile, I immediately recognize her. And after checking her bio, I, um, to confirm that she does indeed have franchise experience, I decide to refer her to my client. And as you can see, it's super easy to download Julie's V card from her Krubiz profile, profile. So this allows me to easily share her contact information with my client. And finally, the member directory is completely mobile in the form of an app. It's ready to go with you wherever your business and networking takes you. And one quick caveat, to search the entire member directory, you must have search directory selected. If you have my contacts selected, the app will only search amongst those members with whom you have connected with. Uh, the search function on the app it will allow you to search by name, organization, city, and email. So if you want to further segment your search, you would need to do that on your desktop. My second key is our speakers directory, which is the only section of Krubiz that can be viewed by the public. We encourage members to position themselves for future speaking opportunities all the time. So setting up a speaker pro Speaker profile in Krubiz is crucial. You can do this by clicking the My Profile tab and selecting My Speaker Profile to get started. Members can include their speaker bio, areas of expertise, past presentations, speaker fee, and more. And this stuff can be updated at any time. So here's a quick slide that I created to give members like top three reasons why you should be in the speakers directory. Number one, it's a member benefit. It's included in what you're paying for membership and it's wicked easy to, to set up. Um, this will allow members to find new audiences, clients, and to establish repeat business. And you won't need to pitch yourself to get found. The speakers directory has a growing list of industry professionals who use the site to find the right speakers for their events. So by adding your profile, these professionals can find you and start contacting you about their upcoming events. So versely, the directory, you know, it's a one-stop resource for you as well to tap the expertise and talent within our membership. 
Search the directory by topic, location, or name to find crew network members who fit your speaking and event needs. And remember, this is a public directory, so help us promote it to other organizations in your market too. My third key um, is about deal making opportunities within Cruvis, and it's quite possibly my favorite. It's the open forum. This members only discussion forum allows you to share best practices, network, give and get business, as well as promote employment opportunities. The Crew Network open forum discussions allow you to interact and communicate online and via email and members are posting here daily. Here is a perfect example. This commercial banking officer, she's looking to refer a client to an architect and someone who can assist with a facility study. And here's another one of our most popular threads to date. Um, and this is another good example of the, pow the power of a subject line. And as you can see in the Daily Digest, a great subject line stands out and it gets people to click on it. And like I said, these, these deals are being delivered to member inboxes daily. So encourage your members to take a moment each morning just to peruse the email. If anything, just check out those subject lines. The fourth key, um, you know, the Krubis community is a means for members and leaders like yourself to exchange knowledge and expertise. The key to tapping this expertise from your peers is to post a message in the open forum. You know, don't recreate the wheel. Get, get answers to your chapter's administrative questions and join in on discussions to exchange ideas, experience, and knowledge with your fellow crew leaders around the globe. Here are a couple notable examples. Um, Adrienne Bain here, she's looking to um, gain expertise and documentation that other chapters have used um, from their crew careers programs. Um, and here's Kristen Reese. She's asking for suggestions and feedback from any chapter that's gone through a rebrand. And I will say it's a good idea to search on your topic before posting a new message into the forum. Another member might have already posted a similar question and the answer might already be there and save you some time. My fifth and final key to Krubis is, is the resource center. And it houses members only documents and tools including playbooks and marketing toolkits. The resource center is structured with two boxes. The one on the left houses your folders. The box on the right contains the contents of the folder that you have selected. To access any of the files, you just simply double click uh, the title of that content. And since this is a chapter leader call, I thought I'd draw your attention to the many sample documents we have posted in the governance toolkit folder. You know, and we're always, we're continually adding resources here, so make a point to check it out. And to further break it, further break it down, it's helpful to know that the items in the toolkit folders are created and provided by Crew Network Headquarters. And the chapter submissions folder, they house examples that have been created and submitted by members themselves. So I hope you found my web and email best practices as well as my five keys to crew biz successful. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. And I think now we are going to give you a couple takeaways on each of our areas. Yes, to wrap up just quickly, three takeaways uh, for, for the Crew Network website and your chapter integrated sites. A, rem a reminder that Crew Network and our chapter sites are public front doors, and that's where all of the information you want to share uh, publicly should be. Crew Biz is your members only resources uh, and discussions, and um, you know, that's a big member benefit, as you know. And then the other takeaway is uh, to make sure that your members are selecting their areas of specialty and completing Crew Biz profiles. Those are the two big ones that we wanna make sure um, we have so we can get more data and get more visibility for our members. <clears throat> and a quick summary on chapter management. Um, the membership roster can be exported for further sorting. So if you're looking for statistics or information about members, <clears throat> go ahead and, and check it out here first. Um, chapter leaders should go ahead and add your committee members using the leadership tab. 
And then I wanted to also remind you about the Microsoft 365 business account. Um, we have resources about it in Karubas in the Resource Center, and that's also where the um, video is if you want to learn more information about it. And finally, my takeaways for Karubas would be to promote the speakers directory within your membership as well as externally in your market. And second, to encourage 100% complete Krubiz profiles to your members. So remember that post by the member about missing bios. And then third is to take a, moment each, take a moment each morning yourself to peruse that daily digest email yourself, um, and as well as encourage your members to do so. Wonderful. So I have a couple questions here submitted. I'm going to go through. And um, if you have more, please add them into the chat. So Kristen had the suggestion of adding the number total for each category and percentage to the qualified field square graphic instead of having to hover C to see the data. So I think Kristen, you're suggesting a comprehensive list of the qualified fields. That is something that is on our radar. Um, yeah, but that I hadn't heard it stated that way before. So I will add that to my notes. Yeah. Thank you. Great, great feedback. And then, Kristen, this is a pretty technical one. We might have to involve some of our um, what our tech folks, but um, on exporting and on, on, um, chapter management, you're right. So if you export a certain committee or certain group, it has all of their email addresses. So she's asking if there would be a way in Microsoft 365 to have like a group uh, email group for certain groups, and when you update them in chapter management and your committee, is that it would form a committee. Um, like email group or something. It's a very uh, great question. I don't know that either of us have the answer. I know that you can definitely set up a group that way, um, uh, but I connecting it to the live data in our database is gonna be the yeah. frankly expensive tricky part. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, we'll, we'll follow up on that. That's okay. a good question. Um, Cruz Charlotte asked, have you thought about making the demographic information required? And that's tricky. I don't know if we have any lawyers here um, on the call, but I don't know that we, if we can make that, or if Jenny, you have experience in making those demographics required. Um, we have put some, uh, some requirements in place so that if you are editing your information on the um, About Me page and you skip over a field, um, I think it's the, the Expertise, years the of years of experience. Um, it will require you to fill that in before you can submit it, but I don't think we can require gender, age, diversity, those uh, ethnicity, those things. Um, and even um, getting the information, a, a lot of the information comes to us from uh, the chapter member application forms. Um, so, you know, you can ask for it and if, if it's provided, we can put it into our system. Um, but we, we don't control what's asked of the new members um, from the initial application process. Great question. We'll, we'll look into that a little bit deeper. Leanne uh, Gudorp asked, does the affiliate membership category require five plus years of experience or has that been revised now with a new member compensation change to help promote younger women joining? It, <clears throat> it never required it. That was a best practice recommendation. Um, because affiliate members um, aren't involved in one of the qualified fields, um, they are the number of those members that you can have in your organization is limited. So our recommendation, or I should say the task force recommendation um, several years back, was to put a year's experience restriction on the affiliate members that were included or approved for your membership so that you had the more senior affiliate members as part of your membership. Um, to speak to the membership composition changes, we've just completely separated out uh, the experience from the industry experience. So um, it's technically, yes, you can have affiliate members with fewer than five years of experience. Um, but again, it was set up as a best practice because uh, the number of affiliate members should be limited. Okay, and we have one last question from Barbara Shampo on member retention and chapter management. Do the retention figures relate only to the number of members compared to the prior year or the identity of those members? If 
Stephanie's reading the question here. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I think I see what you're asking. Um, okay. It, um, but now I have to think about the functionality behind it. Retention is just a percentage, right? Go ahead, Barbara, if that's you. Okay. So I, I, I always thought that retention was how many of the members from year one renewed in year two. So that percentage might be different than we had 15 members in year one and we had 15 members in year two, but only five are the same. Yeah, that's why I'm pausing because I cannot remember the calculations that are used in that formula. Um, I can get back to you on that though. If you have a chance, that would be great, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Barbara, great question. Okay, we're a little bit over time, but we wanted to um, say if there are any other questions to reach out to us, you have our emails in the, uh, in the deck, in the sponsorship, um, I'm sorry, in the slides, which will be available along with the recording here in a couple days, um, if not sooner. We will share um, all of this information with you via email and we will post it in Crubiz for future use. So if you wanna share it with chapter leaders down the line, but thank you all for attending um, and we hope you learned something new or we hope that you learn um, that you are not an expert in all of these uh, <laughs> all of these areas. So thank you for your leadership and your membership and your service to crew. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take thank care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.